Welcome to a series of instructional videos. On this video, we will be talking about tack time, cycle time, and lead time. Understanding these measurements is key for process improvement and a required input for VSM construction. Let's get started. What is tack time? It's a calculated value based on demand. It gives the rate of production required in order to meet the customer demand. Two things are needed to calculate it. Available time for production and customer demand in units per period of time. How do we calculate the available time for production? Let's imagine we owe a company that works two shifts. Each shift has eight hours. Employees have 30 minute break per shift. The available time per shift is 7.5 hours or 15 hours a day. One month has 20 available days. The available time for production would be 300 hours. That is equal to 1,008,000 seconds. In our example, what would the tag time be? Available time for production 1,080,000 seconds. The customer demand 40,000 parts per month. So the available tag time is 27 seconds. In order to comply with customer demand, one unit should come out of the production line every 27 seconds. But we all know that every process may be affected by different issues that may affect production rate. In order to tackle that, managers assure that the line runs faster than tag time. This is called the cycle time. Cycle time should always be lower than tag time. In our example, 25 seconds would be a good cycle time to be set. Measure planned cycle time continuously on your production line. This will give you a measure of your process stability. It also helps empowerment on operators. If target cycle time has not been met, problem-solving techniques are required in order to meet the demand. So far, we have covered the tag time and cycle time, so let's understand now what lead time is. Imagine we have a production line that consists of two manufacturing processes. Process 1 is where painting takes place and it lasts 5 minutes. Number 2 is a inventory, is where parts are stored or paint, drying in further processing. Process 2, assembly, where pre-painted parts are put together. Lead time is the time that one part takes from the beginning to the end of the process, going through the inventory stages. So what would the lead time for this example be? Correct. Lead time would be 2 days and 8 minutes. Okay, let's do an example. Imagine you have a company that produces bag products. The manufacturing process consists of three processes, bag preparation, bag fill, bag sealing. If your company works one shift, you have a customer demanding 40,000 units a month, but he also requires one unit every 35 seconds. What would the tag time be? Correct, 13.5 seconds. Let's take a look at how this process would look. First, let's measure our lead time. Remember what this is? Correct. It's the time required to produce one bag from beginning to end. It should go through all the processes, including the inventory time. So let's watch the first bag and see until it gets to the final process. Output. The first bag was producing 26.4 seconds, so this is going to be our lead time. Now, let's measure every output. Output. Each output is going to be the process cycle time. Output. Output
output. The average cycle time of the cell is 12.1 seconds. The average lead time of the cell is 26.4 seconds. Did you notice all the inventory? Did you notice the waste being generated? Did you notice the spare time? And did you notice the quality check? On this video, we're going to cover spare time. The rest of the waste are going to be covered in next videos. So now, let's start by looking at each of the cycle times. Let's look at process one, the BRAC preparation. Output. 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 The average cycle time for this process is 6.8 seconds. Let's now move to the second process and look at its cycle time. Output. 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 The average cycle time is 11.7 seconds. Let's take a look at the third and last process, the backfilling. Output. 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 The average cycle time is 5.8 seconds. So now, let's analyze the collected data. Remember what the tag time is? 13.5. We're going to plot the required tag time and the cycle times for each of the processes in a bar graph. It's also a good thing to plot the number of people required for every process. As we can see, all the cycle times are below the tag time. That means that we are going to comply with the customer demand. Do you remember the spare time? Yes. It's shown as a gap between the tag time and the, each of the bars. So now, how can we optimize this process? I recommend first look at the tallest bar and the closest to the tag time. If your process is not complying with lead time or tag time, you can split the time by adding one more process. For this example, add one more person filling bags. If you comply with tag time and lead time, try to combine operations for this. For this example, see if process one and three can be added together. If the addition of both times is less than tag time, then this is a possible solution. Let's analyze option one. Adding one more backfill operation. This splits the time in two by bringing it down to 5.9 seconds. The process cycle time should be somewhere around 6.8 seconds. The cycle time is way much faster than the required tag time. By doing this, we have created more spare time in process two, and we have added one more person to our overall manufacturing processes, making product more expensive. Since the additional speed is not required by the customer, this is not a good solution for this example. Let's analyze option number two. If we combine process one and three, the addition of both cycle times is less than 12.6 seconds. This is less than the tag time, so it, is possible, so it is a possible solution. It requires a layout change. If we do so, we remove one person from the overall manufacturing process. This will still comply with tag time and lead time. Let's see how can we implement this solution. Notice the layout change. Process 1 and 3 are now combined. Let's measure the time required to produce one bag from beginning to end. What is this called again? 
Correct. It's the lead time. Let's follow the bag. Output 29.9 seconds. That will be the process lead time. Now let's take a look at the cycle time. Output. 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 The average cycle time is 13.1. The average lead time is 29.9. Great! This solution reduces inventory and it also reduces one person. Let's do one final example. We now have two customers. The total demand for the month is now 70,000 units. Customers are still required in one part every 35 seconds. So let's take a look at some options we have. Since the demand has changed, we need to recalculate our tag time. What would the new tag time be? Seven point seven seconds. Now let's calculate our tag time if the company would be working to shift. The available time is greater and you divide it by the new demand. You have a tag time of 15.4 seconds. Let's take a look at some possible solutions for this problem. If we use one production cell where we add one more person to the backfield process, we split the time from 11.9 seconds to 5.9 seconds. This speed ups the cycle to 6.8 seconds, making this an optimal solution for the problem. You need to add one more person but it brings the tag time and the lead time. Let's look at another solution. If we use two optimized cells running at the same time, we would still need one more person. Every cell would produce an output of one unit every 12 seconds. But since we have two cells, the overall process yields one output every 6.1 seconds, complying with the required tag time. So this is also an optimal solution. Look that for this solution, you still need four people to operate. Let's look at another solution. If we use two shift, tag time changes to 15.4 seconds. Shift one operates with two people, and shift two operates with two people. The overall is four people required. Since the cycle time of an optimal cell, one, one unit is 12.1 seconds, this is also an optimal solution for a problem. So, how do you choose for the best solution? There are many factors that may affect the best solution. Think of available people. If you don't have four people on a single chip, the first solution for this example would not be possible. Also, think of machine availability. If the backfill machine was not available, Adding a second bag filler or a second production cell would not be a possible solution for the problem. Remember, after all, it's all about meeting customer demand. It's about keeping it lean. I hope this video was helpful. More lean videos will be posted soon. Please feel free to comment and also please like and follow.